Puerto Rico, an island populated by 2,200,000 American citizens. It is a small island, 100 miles long and 36 miles wide, with an area of only 3,435 square miles. It has but one half an acre of productive land for each one of its inhabitants. For nearly 450 years, the people of Puerto Rico were tied to an agricultural economy that could not possibly provide most of them with the necessities of life. They never fell into despair, for they are a courageous people. But they did become resigned to the seeming inevitability of a life in which there was not enough for everybody. Puerto Ricans are much like other peoples. Among them are rich and poor, skilled and unskilled workers, doctors and nurses, people of all occupations and all economic levels, nearly a half a million of school children, and several thousand students at a university that has tripled in size in the past 15 years, and that is today constantly alert to its obligations to the people. A university whose campus is a center of training in the arts and humanities, as well as in those technical fields which are so closely related to the progress which the island is striving to make. There are Puerto Ricans who live in fine homes, who have automobiles, who have means with which to travel and with which to send their children to the United States and other countries to be educated. But the vast majority of the people of this island are poor, and their opportunities, to say nothing of those of their children, are tragically limited. And because so many of them are so poor, they have been the victims of the diseases which are caused by malnutrition. Hookworm undermines their health. Tuberculosis kills them. And their young children succumb to diarrhea and enteritis. They do not earn a living wage. They do not have enough of the right kind of food. And they do not have proper medical attention. But the health situation in Puerto Rico is by no means hopeless. Against great odds, progress has been made. Health centers have been established in areas which once had no medical services at all. The old and the new intermingle dramatically as the country people bring their sick down mountain trails in hammocks as they have done for centuries. The sick man never complains at the jolting he gets. The men who carry the hammock never groan at their burden. Once, when they had struggled to the end of the trail, their wearisome journey had just begun. Today, because new roads have been built, they are met by ambulances. Yes, much is being done. In 1949, the death rate in Puerto Rico was 11.2 per thousand, the lowest in island history. The Puerto Rican born today has far more possibilities of surviving infancy than did his compatriot born 25 years ago, or even 10 years ago. His life will be longer than that of his father, and much longer than that of his grandfather. And yet, he is not getting the medical attention he needs for there are only about 850 doctors in Puerto Rico, and many of them are concentrated in San Juan, the capital city. Medical education is costly under the best of conditions, and it has been especially so for Puerto Rican students who, because there was no school of medicine on the island, have had to travel far to get their training. For several years now, the University of Puerto Rico has been sending students of medicine on generous scholarships to the United States and other countries. But more had to be done, and Chancellor Jaime Benitez of the University, with the backing of Governor Munoz Marin and the legislature, prepared to do it, and did it. Puerto Rico was to have its own medical school. Now, 
It is not easy to create a school of medicine overnight, not at least a good school of medicine. It takes planning, it takes money, and it takes a rugged determination to fight off those of little faith who say it cannot be done. Fortunately, desirable quarters for a school already existed. The School of Tropical Medicine of the University of Puerto Rico, with some alterations, would fill the bill. Even so, a comparatively large budget was necessary, for it was determined that the school would be given ample modern equipment. The legislature produced the money and plans went ahead. Consultants from the United States were called in, and after long and hard study, a faculty of both Continental and Puerto Rican Americans was selected. In August 1950, the school was formally opened. The first class consisted of 50 students, all chosen from a long list of applicants strictly on merit. Every one of these students had a high academic record in undergraduate work. Next year and the year after, and for many years to come, the limitation of 50 students a class will be definitely kept. The temptation to graduate more doctors so that there can be early easing of the taxing demands on present medical services is more than counterbalanced by the determination to maintain a high level of student work in the school. These 50 girls and boys are expected to devote themselves with fervor to their studies. They have been given the best teachers who could be obtained and the finest equipment that money could buy. They work in well-lighted and well-equipped laboratories and have library services that provide them with access to medical journals from all over the world. Every feasible effort has been made to give these students the best with which to work. For the kind of doctors Puerto Rico wants, the best is none too good. So these students are being given the best of care. They live at the school and eat there. Their meals are prepared under the direction of a trained dietitian. The general idea is to provide the students with tasty, nutritious meals at a price they can afford to pay. And they should not have to rush here and there at mealtime. The rooms of the students are attractive and comfortable. Many of them face on the sea and get the salty breezes of the Atlantic. Each room is shared by two students, and simple comfort is the basis on which it has been planned. For the student of medicine not only has to eat well, he must have the facilities for good rest. Thus, the medical school of the University of Puerto Rico is profiting from the experience of American medical schools, which too often have found that their students suffer from the results of inadequate meals and undesirable living quarters. It will not be long before these 50 students of medicine are doctors. Their years of study, broken pleasantly in the late afternoons, when they run across the road for a dip in the nearby ocean, will pass quickly. It will not be long before these students are practicing medicine and will rarely have the time to frolic on the beach in the late afternoon. It will not be long before they are in hospitals and health centers all over the island, before the duties and responsibilities of student life are replaced by the much greater duties and responsibilities that fall on the shoulders of men and women of medicine. And then they will serve the people whose needs made the founding of this school imperative and whose drudging toil under the hot tropic sun produces the sustenance on which the school must feed. The people of Puerto Rico, as their governor has so cogently put it, are pulling themselves up by their bootstraps and this school is going to help them. It was conceived and planned for them and is dedicated to their service.